On today's episode, we will be chatting with Superintendent of Police, Glenn Charles. He will now introduce himself and tell us a little bit more about the rules and functions of the Port of Spain Corporation City Police. I am Glenn Charles, Superintendent of Police, presently attached to the Port of Spain City Police Service, the officer in charge. The role and function of the Port of Spain City Police is that we as the custodian of the city in terms of the, the agency that is solely responsible for the protection of the city. We perform policing at a dual level. We do policing as in, in police language as hard policing and fast policing. Soft policing is really like policing for the people. Community policing. Really building that relationship, that trust and that confidence in the various districts by going out there through different programs and initiatives rolled out by the city police to really engage the community, to hear from the community, to be part of that community. Right? We view ourselves as guardians of the community in terms of like uncles, aunties, brothers and, and so on. Right? Um, we also do ha um, hard policing. Hard policing is more or less like based on the intelligence we get from the communities when we engage the communities. Some of the communities might be encountering criminal activities like you know possession of narcotics, house breaking and all these offenses. So we try to work with this community, we solicit that information in a confidential manner and we executed different types of policing like exercises and, and a sting operation and so on to really eradicate those com communities from those that are deviant behavior. So the role and the, obviously the police really are really a dual role, right? We, we also enforce all the acts all these sections under the Municipal Corporation Act, which is 2504, and all the Republic of, all the different laws of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. So we perform much a dual role, and we try to bond with the community. We try to show policing on a different level. We don't want people to view the police as this bag wolf as long ago, unapproachable. So customer service is very important, and we write it and train it, and we train it because we're all about forge, forging partnership and working with the communities to ensure that we develop safe and sound communities in, 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 in different um, divisions in Port of Spain. <laughs> so Superintendent Charles, thank you for joining us. Uh, what is the difference between the municipal police and the Trinidad and Tobago police? All right, well the municipal policing is really policing at a local level. Okay. It's really engaging in community type policing, policing for the people. So we did, we, 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 our scope is really confined to the different municipalities. Therefore, it gives us a greater opportunity to identify our clients, our customers, and really understand their needs in terms of engagement and having conversation and different initiative and see how best we could partnership with them at a local level and bring some relief or bring whatever assistance that community migrates that um that, that may be required however policing from the tdps side is more dealing with the criminal activities in terms of nationally in terms of the republic of trinidad be able to really identify all the criminal element and really addressing it. Right. But we try to treat with it at a local level before it escalates into that, ne to that national level. So we, in, in fact, we really work hand in hand. This Commissioner, Commissioner Griffith, in his, um, when he came into office, and he, he, he rolled out his crime plan, the city police or the municipal police was the first phase of the crime plan to really go there to create that atmosphere in terms of um, partnership with, the, with right. the communities, building the trust, identifying some of the community needs, and really working with the communities and soliciting that information in terms of criminal activities and see how best we, along with the TDPS, could work to bring some of the relief in those communities. So it's, it's really one, one working at a local level and one working at a, as a more um, national level. But some, sometimes we do coexist in terms of sharing that information and partnership in to ensure that whatever resources both of us have, both agencies have, organizations have at their disposal yes. to, to, to see how we could collaborate, yes. pool our resources together and treat with what before us. That's right. Can you tell me now what are the, the order of ranks of the municipal police? Sure. What has happened is um, based on the, the the Municipal Corporation Act, which which spelled out in terms of staffing, what we have in most of the 
the 14 municipalities is from the rank of superintendent. Right. So the top rank is the rank of superintendent. Right. Under that rank is assistant superintendent. Then we have inspectors. Mm -hmm. Um, from the rank of assistant superintendent, the superintendent is considered first division. Right. We have the second division, which consists of inspectors, mm -hmm. sergeants, corporals, and constables. Okay. However, the government, um, in their wisdom, trying to merge the whole 14 municipalities in one. So what they did, they expanded the municipal services throughout the Trinidad and Tobago. Okay. And they create some posts and contracts. So we now have an assistant superintendent and contract. Mm -hmm along with three senior superintendents of contract. One in charge of North, which comprise of Diego Martin, Port of Spain, San Juan, Puna Puna, San Diego, and the Arima and right. And we have the South, which consider, consists of Cuba, San Fernando, Debe Pinal, Separia, Rio Claro, and Point Fortin. So we have a senior superintendent in charge of North, and not senior superintendent in the south, and we have a, a senior superintendent in charge of training. Yeah. So those is consist of the executive of the municipal police. Okay. So those are the various ranks in respect to the municipal police. Okay. Can you now tell me what training does a candidate have to enroll in if they want to become a city police? And is there an age limit? Yeah, sure. Well, little confusing at this stage. Reason being is that we have two commissions that are responsible for the hiring and employment of the municipal police through Trinidad and Tobago. We have the 10 regions and we have the four, um, the four municipalities. So we have the, start, the public service commission who is charged with the responsibility to recruit police under the public service commission. And those entails Dego Martin, San Juan, Tuna Puna, San Grande, Chagonas, Cuba, Separia, Debe Pinal, and Rio Claro. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Statutory Authority Service Commission, which should also charge responsibility for hiring police and animal parties, which is Port of Spain, San Fernando, Arima, and Point Forte. The entry level is two different. The Public Service Commission that's employed candidates from 17 years to 50. Okay. So one could be anywhere between 17 years to 50. They take three CXC passes right. and they must undergo an examination, an interview, mm -hmm. and sometimes they give you a voice analysis, which is something similar to the polygraph. Right. However, the standards in the Statutory Authority Service Commission, which is charged responsibility for hiring Port of Spain, San Fernando Arima and Port of Spain is much higher. Right. It's the same standards as the Trinidad and Police Service. Okay. So it must be between 18 to 35 years. Okay, but this yeah. is for the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. Right, but also it applies to the persons and them who are under the Statutory Service Commission, okay. who Statutory Service Commission employed, right. which consists of Port of Spain, San Fernando, Arima and Point Fortin. Mm -hmm. And what what the requirements under the Statutory Authority Service Commission is the same standards as the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. So you must have, you must be of good physical health, mm -hmm. and this is I this this will be identified that we have a, a test called the Purpose mm -hmm. Test, which, which is a which is a physical examination test to evaluate. You. you have some different exercises to do within a certain time limit. Mm -hmm. You have to run a certain distance. You have to do a certain amount of push up and so on. Mm -hmm. And if you fail that, well. There, 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 there come all the chances out of the door. Right. If you pass that now, you have to undergo um, screaming, ensure that you have no tattoos and so on and so on. Right. You have to uh, a height limit. You have to do an examination. You have to do a polygraph test. Okay. And you have to undergo the same training as the Trinidad and Police Service. Okay. And set the same exams and the same standards mm -hmm. So whatever, whatever you say. Uh, pass all the candidates, they must mm -hmm. meet all those standards. Right. So it's basically two. One, I have the Public Service Commission, I take three subjects, and the, 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 the recruiting exercise and the entry levels, some like tailor down. Mm -hmm. And then you have the statutory authority now, which is a kind of, which is a more higher level, and you have to meet the same standard at the Trinidad Police Service. And they must pass all your examinations right. by 70%. Okay. In, before you get appointed as a police officer within the happening, right? Um, I know there's conversation um, being discussed to see how they can merge the two entities together and have one standard across the board. Right. Right. So basically, it's two commissions 
and the requirements is two different, okay. right? But the officers and them who, under the statutory authority service commission, which is Port of Spain, San Juan, Man, Point 14, will be officers at a much higher standard. I understand. So, Superintendent Charles, can you tell me what inspired you to become a police officer and how did you move up the ranks to become a superintendent? Well, I grew up in a small little village called Valencia. Valencia produced some of the greatest police minds. We have people like the former commissioner, Mr. Williams, who lived in Valencia those days. We have the deputy commissioner, Mr. Richardson, and most of my close friends and family was police officers. Mm -hmm. Now, I grew up old school in terms of, when I talk old school, in terms of the old school type of discipline, where your yeah, neighbor will pull you up if you're going, if you see they're going wrong, mm -hmm. where uh, your family will pull you up and so on and so on. And I look at the respect those gentlemen had in the village mm -hmm. in terms of being police officers because everybody looked up to them in terms of um, to get that kind of high moral values and standards. Yes. And they always really engage the public. Those guys who travel to work with a uniform and they took pride in uniform. At that time, police officers wear short pants with their putty and so on, with their cork helmet and so on. Mm -hmm. And I used to watch, you know, in terms of how these officers integrate and had that relationship with the community yes. and how they assist. And I look up to those fellas and flush and make them part of my role model. And this motivate me and inspired me yes. to become a police officer. And not only to become a police officer, but being a municipal police officer or a city police officer, it gave me a greater opportunity to work with the, the public yes. that I could... Um, render that same type of service and to ensure that you know when persons and them are encountering any problem and challenges mm -hmm. and they come to the station and make a report that it could be attend to and you know and not only attend to but we could give them some follow-up and make sure that they leave the station in a better place they come so going up in that community in Valencia, mm -hmm. it really gave me a different perspective. It really motivated me and inspired me to become a police officer because of those police officers who was great example mm -hmm. and, you know, really demonstrated in terms of the so many characteristics and attribute that a, pol a good police officer needs. So this this is really was one of my main pillar and foundation and I use that as a catalyst to put propel forward. Now, going up the ranks wasn't easy. Right, because the we don't have one spot for superintendent right. and we have plenty, you know, officers vying for that spot. But I have diligently applied myself to the work. I have a passion for policing, I have a love for policing, I have a fire for policing. And this motivates me to, to to further my studies, mm -hmm. to further my knowledge and experience in the work. Uh, opportunity came for me in 2001 where I was where I work abroad as a police officer for two years mm -hmm. and you know I get that international in terms of policing knowledge I was exposed to several courses mm -hmm. and then I came back to Trinidad and I that time I was attached to the San Fernando City Police and I really bring that wealth of knowledge and experience and really shared it to make the um that our service there better what now I'm in Port of Spain and I always sharing what knowledge I have, I always interacting with other people, always with you know, different ideas and partnershiping and you know and really trying to, to pass on the battle to the younger ones and really motivate them and tell them well, yes we must make a difference. Mm -hmm. So this is more or less you know part of my um, attribution in terms of what inspired me to be a police officer. Superintendent Charles, can you tell me what are some of the biggest challenges that you have faced as the superintendent and also are there any specific laws only geared towards the municipal police and can that can those laws be enforced by the city police yeah. well the first one challenges um our biggest challenges one of our biggest challenges is funding mm. how, how the present structure we exist in is that we don't have the vote in terms of um that control of the purse in terms of funding, right? Recently, the government gave us three votes, that is a vote for building, one for items, and one for vehicles. So that have been working in our favor in terms of um, trying to alleviate some of the challenges that we have with funding, right? Um, but still, the 
in terms of funding now the ministry does control the vote for like uniform equipment and fire which is one of the major necessity or tools in fight and trade mm -hmm. and in order for the officers to really go there and perform now you will it, you will appreciate that you know we need the tools we need the equipment we work in the capital city mm -hmm. and we come like ambassadors in terms of the city boards when we go there we interact we have like the cruise ships and things that's come to our city yes. and those people are coming from different countries yes. so we supposed to be looking a certain way in terms of our parents and to now so demonstrate now that we are city police officers and we, re we represent the city yes. in order to create that kind of atmosphere to put them in a comfortable environment you know in terms of the way they might approach us in terms of for directions and you know from any little advice as as one day visitors within the city yeah. so one of our major challenges again is that the funding now as city police officers we engage in a lot of community policing policing for the people mm -hmm. so therefore now customer services we make that is one of our main pillar in terms of our day-to-day -day functioning of city police officers right because we want to serve the public and we want to serve the public with that spirit of excellence yes. so therefore we have new officers coming into the organization so therefore we need training and retraining mm -hmm. and if we don't get the funds in terms of to ensure that you know we we identify some of the needs and training to, to better develop that officer in terms of at an individual or a police officer therefore then that will impact in terms of the service going out there yeah. also facilities is one of our main challenge because presently the facilities where we operate from we have some challenges right we have been working with all these stakeholders and we have been patient because we possess that love that passion for policing right. and you know we tell ourselves that you know that we every day we come we have that hope that you know one day that you know we will get better facilities and we'll be able to get funding and so on mm -hmm. and that will try to motivate the officers because policing is not an eight to four job Right. Policing sometimes you finish four o'clock, you might have to continue. Sometimes something might come up spontaneously, sometimes it might have flooded and might have different things. So the station is supposed to be constructed in such a way that is a home. Right. Right? In order to make that officer comfortable and it's for the officer to, to ensure that in order to go a long way. Yeah. Recently we have only female officers or so on passing the exam. So what oh. we have, we have a higher percentage of female officers and male officers mm -hmm. so we therefore we need to upgrade the facilities to really provide for those officers to ensure that you know women sometimes you know there's go through their little monthly cycle and so on and so basically again we have been having conversations with the persons of the authority and being disciplined and being that passion I try to motivate myself mm -hmm. And then I try to trickle it down the ranks to motivate the others and for not to give up because as being a superintendent, I have to be very um, responsible in terms of my behavior and in terms of what, what sort of signal and communication I communicate with the person of them under me. Yeah. So if I come at you and say, we ain't working in the building, let me move out or, you know, I express that kind of sentiments then they find out that will trickle down and pretty soon that the whole work the whole work will shut down so i have to let the officers know these police officers we stuff we need to um survive in difficult conditions mm -hmm. right and we have a we we take our outer office we have persons that you know are dependent on each day to go out there and really render that service yes. to build that relationship and i get them to buy in and we have like a community policing section here we have our welfare section and we also provide counsel and things from the office from external agencies like the TPS and some others. So we really rooted and grounded in spite of the challenges. We don't let that deter us. Yes. We look that uh, we, we look at that as a um, as a way to, to build us, to, to mature us and to, you know, to, to really go forward in terms of um, really being that stronger individual. Yes. Um, we spoke about laws and that's section three of the Municipal Corporation Act. Yeah. We have a section here uh, speaks about that, for instance, if somebody come in, come in to the whatever municipality yeah. and they create any offense under the, the Municipal Corporation Act yeah. and they give us the police officer a name and address that we believe to be false or mm -hmm. incorrect, we could um, uh, issue a, a, a fifth schedule warrant mm -hmm. 
and that one now no police officer nothing in the jp can give their bail that that person must go directly to face the magistrate oh. the our counterpart the train and the big police service do not have that power okay right so and this apply to more like I could recall when my early days as a constable and a cop along south, we have some snatchers and pickpocketers when the police turn on, step up there, um, the police and police spin used to come down sand yeah. and pickpocket and slash people bags and so on. And when they when you interview them, they'll give us a name. And when we check them through the system, we'll see the other name. So we should really apply that warrant. Okay. Right, so this is some of the powers we have so and we do use it as our great tools in terms of fighting crime. So this law is only geared to... Only geared for the uh, municipal, municipal officers, yeah. Section 3 of the Municipal Corporation Act, Chapter 245. Okay. Yeah. How can a citizen go about lodging a report at any municipal police station? Well, a report may come in two forms. One, a, um, a citizen might come to the station and make a report in terms of some kind of criminal activity in terms of somebody might snatch a chains, they might get robbed or they might get assaulted or so on and that report is taken in the um, station diary mm -hmm. and depending on that report we immediately dispatch an investigator mm -hmm. because sometimes that report now for instance somebody might come and say look I know walking down Charlotte Street and a man snatch my chain right. the perpetrator might be still in the vicinity mm -hmm. so we'll go and make check along with the victim the person who come to make the report so the person that identify the perpetrator but when the person make any initial report we will ensure that we get a proper description of the person right. and what they were at the port of spain city police we also is the command center in mm -hmm. terms of the net the the communication with the formless party so immediately we'll send out a bulletin to broadcast the command center the right. police command center informing them that john wrong now get robbed and we'll give them a description of the perpetrator for that to sound a bulletin mm -hmm. in terms of all police officers who are wrong person need to be on the lookout for the perpetrator right, right? and we will continue investigations and record statement and so 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 and part of the investigation might involve in obtaining um, the CTT coverage, the cameras, right. if it has one and so on. And we will, you know, we will, we will work with that, that individual as we go along and we will inform them because that investigation might go on for a week or two, depending on how it is. But we will keep that person yes. in terms of the up to date, in terms of where the investigation is at, is at mm -hmm. what stage. Mm -hmm. Right. So we also have the next side of it. So suppose a police officer might go out there and do some wrongdoing. Mm. and really abuse the powers and take advantage of that citizen mm. and that citizen come and make a report then we have to be guided under the municipal corporation regulations mm. which spell out the procedure that we have to follow i as the person in charge can't get involved mm. we have somebody who is referred to as a discipline officer mm. which is more or less a, a, the rank of an asp which is my second in command at this station mm -hmm. our discipline officer is asp walkins when that person come and make that report, we have a, a special form that we'll give the person in triplicates. Right. That person will follow the form and will hand it back to the the sentry. The sentry in return or the officer in charge now will pass on that form to the discipline officer. Right. The discipline officer now will appoint an investigator. The investigator now will immediately serve the alleged default, defaulter, well, like the person, the police officer who the report is being made against, yes. with a notice letting them know well, John Brown or Mary James came to the station and make a report against here, bam, bam, bam. And they have seven days to, uh, to, to for a response. Yes. Right? And after the, 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 the seven days response, well, the, the investigator now will. will so we'll submit a file mm -hmm. which will go to the discipline officer with all the facts and from statements from witnesses and other evidence mm -hmm. the in the discipline officer he come like the dpp mm -hmm. he will he will peruse it and see whether or not the it have any charges to be laid against the officer mm -hmm. and if so he will write if charges to be laid against the officer then we'll inform the officer that charges will be laid against you and what are the charges mm -hmm. and then he will recommend to the assistant commissioner of police that a tribunal will be commenced immediately in terms of treating with this offense and the the well then where i communicate now because i may be appointed as a tribunal officer right. hence the reason why my, i mustn't get involved in terms of the early stage of the investigator investigation right but then sometimes i being attached here we have three other superintendents so they might we have one man tribunal and we have three by tribunal one man tribunal is the category offenses which is less serious 
three man tribe we land as the category of offenses which is very serious where you could get dismissed right one man tribunal you must remember they might find it at 10 days p right three man tribunal it could be get it could get dismissed right so basically that is how the the both side we have the criminal side of it and we have the internal side in terms of the officer but at each stage whether it is being criminal or if it's something we have to deal with, treat with internal, right. we always keep the person who making the report up to date and we try to be comfortable. One of the things I just do on my charge is that I do really try to show bastards because we just emphasize in terms of training and retraining and we just let the officers know that we wouldn't be tolerating any, any, they're not dropping the ball. Yes. So if we, if we fall short in, in respect to, um, our standards. Yes. Well, then, well, it will be, it will, it, it will be, it, it will be consequence under the under what is the regulation. Because again, we want to send a strong message, and we look into always, always maintain that level of standard within the when you right. And one point I said standards, that means the people below will have to follow the standards. Yes. This is this information is so important. Hmm. But one of the things I always want to find out is. What are the borders? What is what are the jurisdictions in which the municipal police can operate? Well, the municipal police can operate through the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. What happens is um, we have fourteen municipalities, and each of the municipalities have is really charged with the responsibility, a task responsibility to really police that municipality. For instance, I work in Port of Spain. We have the Commissioner of Police give here that um, autonomy to be a police officer for the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. So I, how, how we de, how the, struct, the present structure and which we decentralize the day-to-day -day operation is that we have a strength in San Fernando, we have a strength in Point Fortin. So it wouldn't be feasible that people from Port of Spain go in San Fernando and vice versa to really, to really confuse the whole system. So we have a strength in Port of Spain that really deal with Port of Spain. Right. However, if, for instance, uh, offense happening in Port of Spain and I need to go to Rima to, con to continue my inquiries, then I have the same powers and privileges and rights as a police officer in Arima. Okay. Likewise, the Bego. What we do to now, we kind of forge partnership in. So, San Fernando might have an exercise and a short of police, so we'll take police from here and send them San Fernando. Okay. Likewise, San Fernando will send for point and we kind of assist within the 14 West parties. But there are no boundaries to say that we cannot charge somebody or arrest somebody outside the city. Right. We have a structure and we have a structure for Port of Spain and as far as practicable that structure is a Port of Spain. So we try to fulfill the needs of the council and the, the burgesses and the citizens of Port of Spain within that structure. Yes. Right? But nothing bars under the law and the law in fact cater for us to police outside the outside the um, outside uh, or through the, through the Republic of China. So Superintendent Charles, we are shifting gears to a more positive and lighter note. And I would like you to share with us what are some of the positives that have come out of the municipal police under your watch and also by extension. Can you describe a full day in the life of a superintendent? Some of the positives that have been come out under my tenure as a superintendent is that I have a passion and drive for policing. And this is something that I try to encourage and motivate other persons under my charge to adopt that same principle, that same standards. And since being in that position of influence, you know that I could have a conversation with my people under my ranks to ensure that, you know, identify some of the needs and some of the shortcomings of the officers. And it's not about a more punitive, but it's more on a developmental level to help develop the younger officers, to encourage the younger officers to really to buy into city policing or municipal policing, mm -hmm. to really policing for the people and really going out there and being that ambassador in terms of rendering that, um, that type of service you know that you know we ought to and you know to be proud and you know to be a city police and you know and those things right and you know the officers and them have been really binding it and really exhibiting that sort of characteristics and those sort of people so this is what this this is um this is one of the, the major compliments right? i have several other compliments but really seeing that you know that the officers and develop in terms of that that product what we want mm -hmm. now i have been petitioning for in the city police in terms of getting certain things like, for instance, communication with the DPS. Mm -hmm. We 
we might be walking on Frederick Street and a crime might be happening and the, the, the command center might broadcast it, but we don't have access to the frequency. So therefore it poses a, a danger to our officers. So after years of petition with the Commissioner Mr. Williams, the then Acting Commissioner, I recently got it in terms of we are the same frequency with the TDPS so we can know what's go going on in the city. Mm -hmm. Addition to that, I created an operation center Likewise, similar to TDPSO, that we in Port of Spain is really the, the catalyst of the network to gather all the day-to-day -day information in terms of the 14 minutes parties. So I can tell you what's going on right now in, in, um, San, in San Juan, point 14, how much patrols out, mm -hmm. if they have any reports and so on and so on. Because we have constant communication with the, um, the Trial Rego Command Center. A simple thing like ID cards. We did we wasn't we didn't have ID cards in terms of the, the normal template ID card at the police service. And I petitioned for four years before Mr. Williams was approved. It, mm -hmm. Right? Likewise, um the thousand dollars we wasn't um, afforded the thousand dollars allowance when um when the government the then government gave it and I met the the former Prime Minister, Ms. Kamala Bisa Science Kina Park in an event and I talked to her. About a whole hour we sat and talked and she told me well to write and write and the process start and eventually we got it, right? And of an info informal encounter. Mm -hmm. Right. And I have been did a lot for the municipal police, not only for Port of Spain, I introduced the colour party, right, in nineteen ninety five and which has come more like a flagship for the the fourteen municipalities. Right and um, I could go on and on in terms of some of my achievements and I do it because of the passion, the drive and I want to see that the municipal police you know, is up to that international bend standard because I travel a lot and when I go away and I interact with my with New York City police and so on, you know, I, you know, they always welcome me as a city police and then my past experience as working as a police officer abroad, you know, it gave me that international plus local love and give me a kind of a gauge and a benchmark what I need to do to really motivate the younger ones and so on and so on. So I have been trying to see my best to see how I could lift the bench standard boost as an individual to motivate the younger officer. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, making proper representation to some of the needs in terms of tools to perform the trade while we go there. Um, the life of a superintendent of police is very difficult because every day you come, you don't know what they might meet, right? And then I, a constable now, a corporal who is responsible for the, council, the constables, he will just have the constable's problems to deal with. The sergeant, who is responsible for the corporal and the constables will have three of them problems, like why come up the ladder. But as the superintendent, they have all the ranks problems to deal with. Mm -hmm. And then when they come to work now, you know, people might come with some domestic problems, you know, and all kind of problems. So you have to be a counselor, you have to be a guy, but at the end of the day, if two or three people, two or three officers come with a problem, that is three officers lost, with, which will reflect on the, the output for the day in terms of manpower. So my role has had to really motivate and encourage and so on. But I see it as being a process to develop me further in terms of I love challenges, right? Um, as a manager, they say if you don't really encounter any challenges when they come in at managing, and it, it brings out certain attributes and certain skills in you that able you to, to, to manage your problems. Sometimes you might manage it in the best way, but they learn as they go along. Mm. And uh, you know, it comes like a like case law because. After a while, you now we could probably, you know, have a con I might have a conversation to our officer below my rank, and I could tell him well, I had a, a problem similar to that, and this is how I dealt with it. Right. So try it and see how it working, right? And so the constant challenges, it make me grow as an individual. It make me grow as a leader, as a supervisor. It give me a little, a little wider knowledge. You know, I look at things different. I have, I do. Not every time I say do it my way. Right. I sit down, I listen. I have regular meetings with the the, 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 the lower ranks, and I hear from them mm -hmm. because it's good to hear from what the lower ranks saying, and I try to apply it. I try to make them part of decision making. Yeah. I because I try to operate as a team, as an organization. So it's not all those some of the instructions that I give from top down, but most of the most of the things what I could include the younger ones in the various ranks, I try to do. And I try to foster that kind of alliance and that togetherness. And I also try to encourage that kind of um, stakeholder engagement, 
meeting with the different stakeholders and making everybody part of the community right that way you know the it become more viable in the community and people respect that that the city police are really making a contribution in terms of helping us and assisting us in the community so the life of a, a superintendent is not really easy and then the present structure that we have to deal with mm -hmm. because you have the politicians you have the administration and then you have the police the police side of it so you have to know how to marry and mesh the tree together without any without any disrupting everybody you're making everybody feel that you know that you know you're not you're not you're not willing to work with them and so on right so again the challenges is with me personally that's development me so superintendent mm -hmm. charles we just want to thank you for your time mm -hmm. that you have taken to have this interview with us and our final question would be what is your favorite part about working at the port of spain corporation well i want to thank you for speaking all the time off and being in on part of this exercise but um get to get into the question is that my favorite part of working in corporation is that the city of port of spain when you look at in terms of the the, the caribbean is considered like new york city yeah. right so it gives me the opportunity to really highlight policing municipal policing on that level it bring me closer to all these stakeholders yeah. who is in a um, position of authority and who are the decision makers to really to put the municipal police on a map right and to really to, to really to really engage them and in order to, to demonstrate to them that yes this the municipal police or the city police can make a contribution also i like working in the port of spain city um corporation is that you know we do we have a strong leadership both from the council side and the administration side and they challenge it every day to go to, to, you know, to perform at that level of excellence, right? We have a mayor and he, he's a stickler for, for, for excellence. And, you know, and, I, and I, like, I love that in terms of, you know, the push here, push here. So you never get too comfortable and tell yourself you have reached the pinnacle of your career, yeah. right? And, you know, we, or we work together as one. Yes, we might have our differences. And in terms of how we, how, we, how we do things, but at the end of the day, we all come together as a family and I feel very welcome, I feel very loved, I feel very appreciated mm -hmm. working in the Port of Spain Corporation. I even work in any other corporation. I, have, I will like to finish off my tenure right here mm -hmm. and continue to make that corporation, that, that contribution in terms of development in the city because I, have be, I buy into in terms of you know, some of the council's you know, initiative. Mm -hmm. And I think as a capital, working in capital will put me an advantage to ensure that the municipal policing is remain at the international band standard. And that concludes this week's episode of Know Your Corporation. Thank you for joining us. Stay tuned to next week's episode where we will highlight another department.